no, not to the cloud, stop. Oh, fine. All right, it's done. Um, I am recording, yes. I, I yeah, there's a little dot there, cool. Um, I'll have to go find it at some point. All right, so I want to demonstrate how, how to set up a, a Jasmine uh, a test framework for uh, a project. Um, and just note the things I'm doing, because I'll probably just set up a repository by itself anyway. Um, and uh, just, uh, it'll be good just to watch and pick out things that um, uh, are interesting to you. Um, so the first thing we, we should do is, um, actually just create a repository. Let's call this, uh, I don't know, let's set up. Um, um, and the first thing as always in a, in a node project is to initialize it. All right, this gives you um, a couple things. Um, uh, it gives you a, a quick way to sort of set up your package.json, which is essentially the information about your project. And if you can't be bothered, just hit enter a bunch of times um, until you go through all the defaults and it gives you a default. So what that just did is created this file called package.json. This is essentially what your package is going to be about. Uh, and it's written in the JSON format. So if we want to have a look at it, you can see that it's given me so key value pairs about the project. It's the name, the version number, there's no description, there's a starting entry point, and there's no like NPM scripts I've written. So if I run NPM test, it will give me that message because that's there's not, nothing been specified. Any authors and licenses, it's just a very, every project should have one. So every time you go into a new project, you know, setting up a node project, you make sure it's that you, you, you initialize it using NPM init. Um, then we want to, um, uh, let's just make a source directory and I'm going to, uh, go to, uh, set up node.js for Jasmine. So let me put that in your cohort channel. So Jasmine itself is, uh, just a directory, all packages are folders. Um, uh, applications, just files and folders uh, hosted somewhere else. In this case, we want to install a, uh, a library uh, and the library is again, just another name for a folder of full of files. Um, and uh, we're going to use the node package manager to, to manage all our, all our uh, packages. So let's install it locally. So npm install, making sure I save it as a dependency in my project, Jasmine. So now you can see that I've added a dependency to my project. This tells me that my project is going to be using Jasmine. This is important. Every project should have its own list of dependencies, specifically with versions. You can see that as a result, that I've also created this lock version. And I've also created node modules. Now, always, always, never, I guess a bit of a confusing statement, always, never. Um, never uh, uh, commit no node modules to GitHub. They're huge, right? Sometimes hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of, of small and, uh, files and folders. So always, uh, whenever you're thinking about committing a work, Let's make sure we set up a, 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 this repository is using Git. Uh, let's create a git ignore. Oh, that's not how I spell it. Um, and in the uh, ignore, just make sure you have no modules written there. So in your git ignore, you should have node modules as the one line that makes sure that git won't track that, that folder because that in big projects can get absolutely huge. Um, okay, what else was I gonna do? Uh, these are things that have happened when I've created my, my project. Uh, um, there's a uh, sort of 
a locked version of the dependency. So whenever uh, you push this to GitHub and other people put it down, it locks all versions to, to whatever is mentioned in this file. Uh, it's important. So the package.json is information about your project. The lock is what specific uh, uh, versions uh, all your packages need. Um, okay, what else was I doing? Uh, setting up. Um, cool. So once I've installed the project, uh, installed Jasmine, you can also install it globally. Um, uh, uh, I, so my thought on this, or my suggestion for you all, is to always save things lo excuse me, locally um, um, and get into the habit of making sure you're using local, uh, 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 local copies of any packages you're using. This is to say that you should always make sure in any Node.js project you have, you have a package.json and, and a node modules folder. If you're not using that, then you're relying on a, sort of a, a higher system level uh, a version of that package and you might run into issues. So where possible, always make sure you're using local to that project. So you should be able to find it. Any project, any, any dependency you need, it should be in that node modules folder. There are other sort of more co like global versions of it. So if you, uh, I'm not gonna worry about that. No. So uh, always just be, try where possible to be local. As a result, let's use um, um, NPM to run the, the initializer for us. So I'm getting uh, Jasmine to just like initialize. What's that done? Um, that's created a spec folder. Let's open this up and actually look at it now. That's created the spec folder um, uh, with some information about um, uh, what, uh, it, what it needs. And essentially it's just gonna say, it's gonna look at any, any spec file in the spec directory that has this pattern, anything that ends in spec.js. What else do we need to do? At this point, you should be able to write your first test. So let's go here, let's have a look. Your first suite. So let's let's grab this. And let's create a uh, add spec. Um, so let's say add, we're going to describe the add function and let's say it can return three and we're going to do something like add one and two to equal three. So this is how I want to write my test. Now there's a few new things in here. As you might see when you're looking at, at my screen, there's a describe um, a method. Uh, let's break this down a little bit. There's a describe method. This, this describe method clearly comes from Jasmine, the, the, the test framework, rather than using your own methods, we're using an, an external uh, set of methods. This describe method takes two arguments. Okay, this first one is a string, describes the test. And the second one is a function. We're actually passing in the function itself, and then get executed. And that's where we write our test. So describe is like a, a set of tests, like you've been using your constant log to describe some of the tests. Now we can just use a, a describe function. And the same thing happens in the it. So the it is responsible for individual tests. So you'll might likely have like this. Now, a slight difference between how you've been writing tests is that there's an expect method, and that's where you can put your uh, uh, code to execute. So if you wanted to break this up a little bit in terms of our three steps that we've been doing, set up, execute, and verify. And you can still use your execute step here and do something like that result, and then expect results to equal three. Right. The advantage of it, of using a Jasmine is going to be it's much more standard. You'll see it in lots of places and it's very readable. You can very quickly see on line seven what the intention of this spec is. 
expect result to equal three. Now these matches, these things on the, on the end here, you can find a list of them uh, uh, on the JASN docs. Um, you can go here where it says matches. Matches is a word for, to describe how to assert on something, whether it's is it here to be something or to equal, uh, etc. Um, and you can find a whole list on one of these uh, links here. Matches, there you are. Expect to be, to be, et cetera. To be defined, to be false, to be falsey. You have loads of things that you can now assert. And rather than just simply using the assert equals method, you now have access to a bunch more matches to think about how you want to test your code. Um, we still need to um, require uh, our source code. So let's do something like uh, I guess we'll add it in a second. Should be fine. Um, Yeah, something like this. Um, then we have to run it. So let's have a look at how do we run our tests. Um, uh, if we go back, we should be able to do, 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 do. We should be able to just run our spec. Uh, does it actually say here? Let's go here. Should be able to just, uh, uh, run it using a uh, node, no mpx jasmine. Cool. So um, I'm using the npm script runner to run jasmine in my directory. Um, and it showed me I have two specs, zero failures. So let's have a look at what a failure would look like. Let's say I want three plus two to equal four. Um, and you can see that I get um, a, a green dot for passing and a red F for failure. And that's like the quick summary. Uh, and then it gives you uh, more useful information here, specifically um, an expectation of, of, of uh, what it wanted and what it got, and then and some more information about exactly what line caused it. So it's quite fun. You get a lot more useful output quite quick um, and you write readable tests um, in, in this way using a describe to, to group together a set of tests and it for individual unit tests. Yeah. Couple of thumbs. Any, any, any thoughts or um, reflections having just set this up quickly up? Is everyone really excited to use Jasmine now? <laughs> cool. Um, uh, again, with anything new, there's probably a few minutes where you'll have to go through setup, chat to your pair partner, and, and, and make sure you 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 um, uh, get in the habit of writing tests like this. Um, and soon it'll be second nature. Um, and going forward from this week, I'll expect everything to be done using Jasmine. Um, do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording.